Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Tonight, we begin a scenario by Scott D. Anielowski, entitled Cold Warning. It was recently updated to 7th edition by Oscar Rios and Tim McGonagall, and it's available from Golden Goblin Press. Zane Fleming is the Game Master, and this is Episode 1. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Zane? Now, uh, the, the game starts in 1927, February, uh, in Arkham City, Massachusetts. Now, this is the coldest weather that Arkham has seen in a very long time. It's bitterly cold. And uh, the main issue, like it, it's snowing and things like that, but the main problem that everyone's having is the wind, because the wind, it just cuts through you. It, it's really place. like, it's, it's, good, it's getting through the clothes and everything, and, and people are having a really rough time. Um, now, just before the game started, I told the characters I was going to, uh, the players, I was going to get them to introduce their characters. I've actually decided I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get you guys to to meet the characters throughout the game and, and get introduced to them. Um, so to begin, we're going to start off with um, two of our characters, Neville Cray, a private detective, and his partner, Miles Archer, two members of Cray and Archer Detective Agency, as they make their way over to um, a Dr. Uh, Trenton, I believe his name is. No, Dr. Harrod. Uh, Dr. Harrod's... Um, practice on the um, upper side of uh, Arkham City. Um, so, gentlemen, you guys are coming into, uh, you, you just walked across the street. Um, you, you've gotten off the bus and you, you've walked up the street towards um, quite a nice um, neighborhood. This large colonial building. Um, it's got red brick and white columns. Um, and um, this is a, a is quite a nice kind of upper class area. Um, you come there's one of those kind of iron gates across the front yeah. um, and it says uh, Dr. Harrod um, psychiatrist written across the front <sighs> Christ God almighty Archie, this is the worst winter I've ever seen glad glad Agnes got me that coat last week <sighs> I should have brought my muffler <laughs> oh, well, whatever let's, let's ring this doorbell alright oh crap did you get Anthony back at the office to get the 1084 over to the police from the last case of course I did. What do you think? I'm a rookie? Ah, uh, totally forgot. Nah, not you know. Uh, don't worry about that. That's that's all taken care of. And Anthony, you know, he's he's kind of he anticipates a lot of the stuff we do. He's a good kid. Yeah, he is. For a clump. <laughs> so you ring the doorbell? Yeah. Okay. So the um the door. You wait a little while, and then you you hear movement behind, and then the door opens. And there's um, a young girl, probably in her mid twenties. Um, you'd probably guess it as a student. Um, and she says, um, "Mr. Cray, Mr. Archer." Yes. Yes, the doctor is uh, expecting you. Please can't come in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so she leads you guys into kind of the main um, sitting room, um, and there's a little desk off the side there, which is obviously for her, the secretary. Um, and she, she says, uh, uh, my name is Josie. Um, can I get you, gentlemen, anything uh, while I go and in, uh, inform the doctor that you're here? Well, if it's not too much trouble, uh, you know, some coffee or some tea or something like that. It's uh, it's, it's better cold outside. Yeah. Uh, how do you take your coffee? Uh, black. And you, Mr. Archer? Uh, just water's fine. Thank you. No problem. And so she goes off, pours your cup of coffee and water comes back and, and gives him to you know I'll, I'll be just a moment and she walks off upstairs uh, to obviously let the doctor know um, it's a nice place huh yeah yeah how the other half live oh, doctor Doctor's now gonna make some money you guys are very um very used to people never ask who's who because um you guys just have a reputation um of you know you got quite defined looks neville um you're a very good looking man pencil thin mustache beautiful red hair uh miles you're extremely tall and well built you come in at a how tall are you i can't exactly remember how six two yeah no i think i had you as like six seven or something like that you're a very tall man um 
Oh, six, six, seven. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so he's six, seven, and he's just pure solid muscle. So they just, from your reputation alone, they don't need to ask who's who because people just know. Um, so eventually, uh, Josie comes back and she says, I'll take you through now, gentlemen. Thank you, miss. And she leads you guys up the stairs. And um, as you guys go up the stairs, you can see different kind of um, uh, certificates of, of study and, and things like that. Very clearly, this is a doctor of some repute. Um, you know, he, he's in a, a nice area of town and he's got quite a few certificates of different um, methods of, of psychiatry and, and, and uh, that kind of thing. So he's um, a psychiatrist, not yes. a medical doctor. No. No. Um, and so they he leads you in, and behind the desk is a, um, a, a man, probably you'd say kind of late 40s, early 50s. Um, he's got a big moustache and, and, uh, and kind of uh, the circle glasses, rim glasses. Uh, and he goes, ah, gentlemen, a pleasure to meet you. Uh, Anthony Harrod, a pleasure, pleasure. And he shakes, shakes both your hands. Uh, please, please, uh, take a seat. Thank uh, you. Of course, Mr. Harrod. You said this was something concerning uh, uh, Mr. Oh, well, Joseph Sutton and uh, yes, yes. The, the banker. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Joseph Sutton, uh, one of my, my patients. Uh, I started treating him in, uh, well, it must have been August last year, August 1926. Uh, yes, he, he came to me with... Uh, uh, with horrific nightmares, he was having trouble sleeping, and um, I well, I helped him work through these 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 things, and um, uh, well, it, he was he was coming out the, the other end. He was he, he was starting to improve, I believed, and then all of a sudden, one day in in December, uh, he well, he committed suicide, and just it, it never sat right with me. Well, I seem to recall reading the newspaper article. Um, mm. Would you say that such a suicide out of the blue like that was typical to a patient such as him? You are a psychiatrist, so. Well, look, it's hard to say. Is that everyone's psyches are, are, are different? Everyone deals with their problems in different ways. But as I said, Joseph seemed to be coming out of, of, of the darkness that he, he had found himself in. Yeah. And he was improving. And, and things were getting... I mean, he, had, he had a lovely wife. He was very much in love. And, and you know, she's pregnant, baby on the way. And, and then all of a sudden, it just... One day, I, I get a phone call to say that he'd committed suicide. It, it didn't match up. And... Yeah. Uh, Especially here. Sorry, go ahead, Archer. Oh, no, it's just something seems fishy here. This just... It doesn't seem to add up. Uh, yes, yes, I, I completely agree. Yes. Well, I, I don't know anything about you know the psychiatric field. I'd I'd ask, uh, what did he seem? This problem he was having with uh, nightmares was it getting better? He wasn't having so many dreams. Well, you see, one of the methods I use to help my patients that sometimes deal with these sorts of things is is hypnosis. Uh, I, I, I put them into a hypnosis state. I ask them questions and, and they, there's no blocker, there's no boundary. They normally seem to be more truthful and more open. Uh, so, uh, well, this method seemed to be quite useful for, for Joseph. Uh, in fact, if I, uh, and he starts uh, rummaging around in some drawers next to him, uh, and then he pulls out um, a file uh, and, and in it is um, kind of one of those um, almost looks like a, a, a small record. Um, and he's got like a, a, a player trying to sign. He goes, here is one of um, the recordings I made of um, of uh, of Joseph. Uh, would you like to hear it? Please. Sure. It's cold, very cold. All around me is snow. The sky is black and feather. My ears explode with screams of a wind that rips at my body. My skin burns and then goes numb. Lungs start to freeze. I gasp for air. My head throbs as my blood turns to ice and my skin blackens. 
Suddenly there's movement there it moves in the sky above me. Something huge. Something dark. I gasp and try to run. Cold arms reach for me from the snow, pulling me down. A wild shriek pierces my eardrums. I scream. I can't feel anything. My body is numb. There are blurry faces in the swirling wind. They move toward me. They aren't human. They aren't anything else. I struggle. The pressure of the snow and ice smothers me. The blurry faces get closer. The dark shape from above calls me on the cold wind. I try to scream above the howl of the wind, but my voice is drowned out. I have just two red stars burning in the black sky above. Wow, this this guy sounds pretty disturbed. This this was he was relating to you a dream that he'd had. Yes, yes, this was him. Uh, at, at, you see, when he woke up, he could never remember the nightmare. So through uh, my hypnosis sessions with him, we were able to piece together the dreams by going into his hypnosis state. He could remember what he encountered within the dream. Uh, unfortunately, my some of my equipment is uh, a little bit dated, so that the sound quality is a little uh, finicky, I, I'm afraid. Uh, it, I mean, was this a recent dream, one that was brought on perhaps by the... Uh the terrible cold and storms that we have been having lately with all the snow? No, but as a young child, uh, um, Joseph went hunting with his father and uh, up in Maine. And um, well, unfortunately, uh, him and his father got lost and uh, there was a, a big incident, a big uh, horrible case uh, where Joseph's father actually lost his life. And poor Joseph was, was locked out, uh, lost out in the woods for, well, weeks. Uh, when they found him, he was near dead. His left hand was completely destroyed uh, with frostbite. My goodness. And uh, so I believe potentially some of uh, this could be the case of it. Uh, he did recently take another trip up to Maine to visit his uh, brother, Stuart, I believe his name was. And uh, perhaps going back to the scene of where this encounter happened, uh, brought on these nightmares I, I i don't fully know i i was getting to the bottom of it before well joseph committed suicide which as i said before it, it doesn't sit right with me it doesn't make sense was so, this recording oh go ahead i'm sorry I, I i wasn't go ahead please was this recording um this particular dream uh this was reoccurring this just wasn't a, a one instance but you you ran into this multiple times as far as I know, this was the the reoccurring dream that he uh, that he had. Yes. Hmm. So it's your opinion. So, what do we know about the suicide? Are we? Uh, you've called us in for. Uh, I, I'm I'm assuming that the reason you've called us in is because you don't feel that it was a suicide. But do we know any yes. of the details behind the suicide? Well, how did he commit suicide? Well, as, as far as I know, the police obviously wouldn't let me know uh, as much, which was quite a nuisance. But uh, I know he shot himself, supposedly. Um, and uh, supposedly he did leave a note. Um, but he shot himself in his home uh, one night. And uh, he was discovered by, by his wife. Oh. So I imagine she's quite traumatized by the whole incident. Well, yes, I, I tried to get in contact with her, but I, I, I seem to be uh, uh, struggling. The last time I did speak to her, she said she was she would be fine if I, I sent uh, some investigators over to to have a look at the home. Uh, okay. She has given me a she has given me a, a key here. I okay. see. So so she's there. not there. Is that what oh, you? Well, said? she could be. I, I haven't heard from her. I uh, see. I, I've been trying to get in touch with her. Yes. And I'm sorry. What's her name? Obviously, Mrs. Sutton. Uh, but... Uh, Marilyn, Marilyn Sutton, lovely, oh, Marilyn, lovely. Marilyn Sutton. Yeah. Originally from uh, the San Francisco area, I believe. Oh, Sutton, I San see. Francisco. And you said uh, that she is pregnant. Uh, yes, yes, the, 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 they've been pregnant for a while now. Well, most people who are pregnant are pregnant for a while. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's... How far along is she? Do you have any idea? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I mainly dealt with Joseph. I only uh, met Marilyn 
uh, once or twice. But um, well, I I'd see. say uh, getting rather close the last time I saw her. Do you know who would have the uh, access to the to the suicide note? Well, I'd say the police, but I, I must be honest. Uh, the reason I'm calling you gentlemen is, is the police have well, they, they've decided it's a suicide. They want nothing else to do with it. So they we should be able to get a hold of some of that information. We've got, you know, the, the, of course, we work with the police all the time. Yeah, yeah right. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, I just said I've, I've had slight problems with you. Uh, uh, sorry, slight problems with, with the police. They don't seem to want to talk to anyone not uh, within family of the case. Uh, uh, which is why I was trying to get re in touch with with Marilyn to see if she could uh, help me. Uh, but um, as I said, I've been struggling to get in touch with. Perhaps uh, if you, you know you drop by the house and you can inspect the scene and, and talk to Marilyn herself. And do we? When did this all take place? I forget the date. If you don't. Yeah, uh, J- Joseph committed suicide in, uh, on the twentieth of December. Yes. Twentieth December. Ah, uh, so it's been a couple of months. It's been a few months. Yes. That'd be 1926 would be. The... 26, yeah. Yes, correct, yes. All and right. I started well, treatment in August on Joseph. Um, I, I suppose uh, not to bring up, uh, you know, the more common stuff, but uh, uh, what uh, what are you looking at uh, for paying us a fee? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, well, I'm more than happy to pay you well, somewhere in the sum of uh, uh, ten ten dollars a day. Would that suffice, gentlemen? Oh, that's more than enough. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, if if you need any information, please please uh, 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 call my number, and um, I will uh, I will be more than happy to assist. Uh, if you do uh, speak with Marilyn, uh, I would appreciate. Uh, you to 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 come back to the office perhaps tomorrow, and um, uh, to tell me what you found and what you believe. Uh, if you believe it is something other than suicide, um, just to keep me informed. All right. Well, we'll find that out. But um, if there is some sort of an investigation, it's going to take us a couple of days to to put to correlate our information. We'll make sure we keep in touch with you, of course. Uh, thank you. We have, we have your much. business card and your number. So yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, gentlemen, I, I must say, uh, I already feel a weight off my shoulders. I, I much appreciate it. Of course. Thank, Thank you. you for your hospitality. Pleasure. Archer, yes. shall we Shall we get going? Let's hit it the road. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so he obviously shows you out, and uh, uh, Josie um, uh, thanks you and, and things and, and, and lets you go. Um, out the door now uh, i'm gonna leave it with you two guys because i'm assuming you're hitting off uh, he gave you the address of um the sutton house which is 594 crane street in the cramp at uh, the campus district ah it's over by miskatonic excellent yeah so it's, it's not too far away it's it's not not that far um so you guys are making your way over there i'm gonna jump over to uh dr richard corky and jasmine roth who have just gotten off the train um, from San Francisco. Do you do your, um, do your scarf up there, child? Yeah, Catch the death. Oh, it's vicious, vicious cold here. <sighs> yes, yes it is. Oh. You guys get off the platform and um, obviously you've collected your, your bags. Um, this was quite a last minute trip for you guys. Um, you, uh, Richard, it was your it was your birthday, um, not that long ago, and um, your your daughter, Marilyn, um, normally calls um, and and wishes you happy birthday, and and uh, and when she didn't, you you felt as a father, you felt something was was something was wrong, something was not quite right. Um, so you you've got quite a few contacts, uh, being a, a doctor of repute, uh, you've got quite a few contacts here in Arkham, and you called around to see what what had happened and if someone could um, check in on your on your daughter um you were quite shocked to find that um her husband joseph your son-in-law had committed suicide um a a few months back and not only that but marilyn was is pregnant um you knew none of this so you knew at this point that something was was desperately desperately wrong um 
so you went and got your your granddaughter from Stanford University um, and told her that you uh, both needed to travel to Arkham uh, to find out what had happened to Joseph and and why Marilyn um, wasn't getting in contact with you. A friend of yours, um, uh, Barnaby, um, Dr. Barnaby, um, he went over to Marilyn's home um, and found the whole place uh, deserted, uh, sheets on all the on on all the furniture um, and and everything. It looks like no one had been there for quite some time. Um, so you, uh, uh, but as you guys get on the platform of waiting there, you see uh, Barnaby. He uh, he pops up and he goes, yeah, "Hello, Cheerio, uh, hello, uh, Richard." Ah, oh, Barnaby, my fellow. Did, did have you heard anything new? Uh, Is there any more news? I'm I'm so sorry, Richard. Uh, uh, but nothing as of yet. Uh, uh, as I said, when I went to go inspect the um, uh, inspect the address of your your daughter, well, uh, I'm afraid it looks like no one's been there for weeks now. Do we uh, have a key, uh, man? Uh, yes, uh, yes. I, I, I've been in contact with a with an officer, Liam Billard, uh, at the police station. Um, and he is going to, uh, I've told him you're on your way and you're coming. Uh, uh, and he, he said he will have everything ready for you when we get there. Uh, so um, I have a, a car waiting outside. Uh, th oh, this must be your granddaughter. No, yes. I, I, this, is, this is Jasmine. She's, uh, she's Madeline, Madeline's niece. Uh, oh, hello. A pleasure, I'm sure. Uh, nice to meet you. Old, old friend of your grandfather's here. Yes, we, we studied together. Um, oh, 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 follow me, follow me. Uh, and he leads you um, out of the station and, and uh, to a car, um, which you, you all pile in the back. And um, he taps on the window and says, "Driver, uh, onward to the to the station there, Jivers." Um, and the car drives off to uh, to the police station. Um, when you guys arrive at the, the police station, um, there's a lot of kind of people bustling around and, and things. And um, Barnaby goes up to, to the counter and says, uh, "Yes, sir, we're here to see." Uh, uh, Officer uh, Liam Billard. Uh, yes, uh, I've got uh, the family members of um, uh, the, uh, Joseph Sutton. Yeah, Marilyn and Joseph Sutton. Um, and, and the person goes, yeah, of course, and they run off and they and they come back and um, uh, they've got a, a, a kind of a portly police officer there with them. And uh, goes, uh, Officer Liam Billard, how, how do you do? Hello. Hello, how, how are you? Um, but what what's the state of play? What what what's going on here? Where where's my my daughter? Uh, well, uh, as far as we know, uh, <laughs> the, the case was clearly your your, uh, your son-in-law, Mr. Joseph Sutton, uh, committed suicide, shot himself in the head. Uh, your your uh, daughter found the body, uh, informed the police, went over, inspected the scene, found a suicide note, everything, um, pretty clean and cut case. Uh, as far as what's happened to your daughter since then, I, I'm afraid, uh, well, we, we, we don't know. We, well, is it we're, possible we're, she's Has anyone on con tried contacting her or anything with a follow-up? Well, uh, uh, your, your friend here, Dr. Barnaby, just said she's, she's packed up the house. But what, well, when was all this? When, when did this happen? Uh, and he pulls out his file and he's looking and he goes, well, it seems uh, Joseph committed suicide on the 20th of December. Um, in his home, um, it was about as far as we could tell, some sometime during the night. Uh, the next morning, your your daughter Marilyn found the body and, and informed the police. And um, it seemed uh, the it seemed Joseph had been going to therapy um, for for a few months now, and uh, perhaps it was he wasn't doing well. Well, clearly wasn't doing well. Why was he going to therapy? Oh, well, that that'd be something you'd have to take up with his his doctor. As far as I know, it was something to do with uh, nightmares. Are you a family man, officer? Um, and he sort of uh, gives you a look, and he goes, uh, "Well, I have a a youngin, yeah." And put yourself in my position for just one second. If you had a daughter. And your daughter's husband killed himself. Do you not imagine that your daughter would get in touch with you immediately to tell you that that was the case? Well, I, I, uh, I guess I hadn't thought of it that way, sir. 
there's, there's something very untoward here. She's not the sort of woman who would do this sort of thing. You know, we have, a strong, we have a strong family and she wouldn't have suffered in silence. Well, I, I, I like I said, I, I don't know your daughter. I, I, I knew, I just was one of the, the officers on the case, but uh, look, what I, look, what I can do is I can give you all the information we have and I'll have one of our, uh, our drivers um, take you over to the house and you can have a look around yourselves. Uh, the key is uh, here. And he, he hands you the, um, the, a key to the home and, and uh, he gestures over to uh, to. A I take it you'd have no objections if we were to lodge the... The missing person's case? If, oh, if no, we were I, to lodge in the house. As far as I'm concerned, uh, you're, you're, you're a member of the family. Um, you know, yeah, that should be fine. No, it's not a crime scene, so anymore, so I, it's I fine. shouldn't want it to come back to an empty house. Um, oh, understandable understandable is it possible to figure out what hospital my uncle was going to uh what well uh, uh parent his uh doctor was a dr harrod i uh, uh, lives over in the uh, upper east side of, of, of arkham uh, all the information is in the file and this harrod is an, an, an alienist you say it, yes yeah Jones, Jones, and he just is over to a police officer and he goes, uh, Jones, uh, this here is uh, uh, the family members of uh, Marilyn Sutton, the wife of uh, the Joseph Sutton who passed away. And young Jones goes, yes, sir. Um, he goes, oh, well, I want you to drive them over to uh, to the Sutton home. Uh, they have the key to enter. They they uh, drop them off and uh, yeah. And he goes, of course, sir. And uh, you guys, he leads you guys away. You say goodbyes to Barnaby and uh, uh, Barnaby says, uh, please, uh, let me know if uh, uh, you hear anything there, Richard. And if you need anything, uh, just let me know, okay? Um, I, I would like to get the uh, the officer's telephone number. Yeah, he gives you all that information and things in, in the file. They're very, they're very kind of forthcoming um, in the file. And you also find in the file, uh, it actually does have um, a photo um, of, uh, uh, no, probably not a photo, probably is actually just you know, the physical thing. Um, of the the suicide notes. Um, so this is what you find. I can't go on. Please forgive me, my beautiful wife and my loving brother, Joseph. Um, it does it does seem like a. A suicide note. Um, and you guys also, there's a few images in there of, they've obviously taken photos of of the uh, the, the scene. Um, and you can see Joseph there, bullet hole um, in, in, to the head um, on, on the on the, um, on the left side um, of, of, you know, of the head. Um, and the gun on the floor, little pistol there. Um, from where it's obviously dropped from where, where he's done it. He's done it in, the, in an office chair. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll make a very um, obvious attempt to try and obscure, and probably unsuccessfully try to obscure the, uh, the, these images from Jeff. Right. Um, the, so... Being, being a man of the last century. Right, of course. Um, so yeah, the... the Grandpa, the, what, are you trying to, what are you trying to hide from me? It's, it's best to don't see these things. It's, um, it's not pleasant. But it's, it's my uncle. Like, you gotta... Aye, precisely. And it's not the sort of thing a young lady should be looking at. Um, so yeah, the, the Officer Jones is uh, taking you uh, off to uh, 549 Crane Street at, on, in the campus district. He's taking you to Sutton House. Um, so yeah, we uh, just as um, we jump over to Sutton House and Neville and Miles, you guys have just arrived um, outside the Sutton home. Uh, the wind is picking up a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah. Nev, do you want a half of my egg and bacon sandwich? It's really good. You're muted. 
Where the hell did you get an egg and bacon sandwich? Back at the office. Anthony brought in a little little buffet. Anthony is a suck up. <sighs> he didn't bring me an egg and bacon sandwich. Mm. And um, just as you guys kind of arrive, um, kind of on the curb, just in front of the the Sutton House, um, a police car pulls up. Um, is behind you there, and um, uh, out of it gets uh, an, an older man uh, carrying a medical bag, um, and um, a young young woman, um, who at a first glance you would you would probably say would be his granddaughter. Check out the gams on that one. She's not okay. Yeah, you suppose this is somebody? What is the cops? Cops are here. Uh, excuse me, officer. Um, where are the detectives Neville and uh, I'm sorry, Cray and uh, Archer? Uh, we're looking into the uh, the Sutton case. Uh, pardon me, ma'am. Uh, what can I, I? I don't know why you're here. We didn't expect anybody else here. Well, this is my aunt's house. Oh, so you're. Uh, Marlon. Your uh, your his her niece, I see. And uh, you, sir? I'm uh, I'm, I'm Mrs. Sutton's father. I see. Oh. Uh, well, um, if you don't mind, we were about to take a look around. We heard that uh, we 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 have reason to believe that there are some uh, odd oddities in this case. Uh, since it's your by proxy, it's your place. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, we do have a key, but uh, obviously you have a key too. Yeah, right, well, um, I'm not really uh, conversant in these these uh, investigative matters, but um, but yes, I, I agree with you. There's, there's something very strange about this. Um, well, we won't cause any disruption. We'll just take a look around. We yeah. were kind of hoping, officer, if, if we can come down to the precinct house later and take a look at some of the evidence, the pictures, the... Um, the, the officer says, um, I believe uh, the, the, the doctor here has a, has the file on everything. Oh, um, uh, sir, may I take a look at that? I, uh, yeah. Here you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, let's take a look at this, Sutton. So, have you guys uh, gone into the house, or are you just still outside? I'll let them go in, and I'll fo- we'll follow. All right, let's get in out of the weather. And uh, I, I must tell you, gentlemen, that uh, we, we we have not ourselves been into the house yet, so we have no idea of what uh, what awaits us in there. Well, we were hoping that she was home. As was uh, I. We were waiting for find out ourselves at the police station. Well, let's let's check and see if she's here. So, um, as you guys um, kind of enter the thing, the, the first thing you notice is like a um, a foyer as you first enter, like a little um, kind of place where people can hang their coats and take the shoes off. Um, it, Neville and Miles, you guys do notice that all the furniture seems to be covered with sheets and things like you know someone's has packed up. Uh, it's quite cold inside, and in fact, the weather is getting worse outside. It's just sort of starting to to, to get worse. Um, as you kind of step a little further in, uh, you notice that uh, off to your right, um, you guys can see uh, what looks like a like a den. Um, there's like a couch, a coffee table, sunroom type thing, and then off to your to your left um, is is a parlor, and then and then directly ahead of you is a hallway and some stairs going up. Prior to coming in, does the house uh, have neighboring houses very close, or are they? Is there a fair distance between them? There's, little there's narrow a, alleyways. No, there's there's a, a relatively fair distance. There's a little bit of like, um, uh, um, there's a little bit of kind of like grass and lawn around the house and stuff. So okay. there's a little bit of distance. Um, can you, everyone, give me a listen check, please? Oh four. I got a one. Nice. Oh, wow. No, I failed. I got a seventy-eight. 
So, I Jasmine, um, as you are uh, into the house, you do hear, sounds like movement um, coming from upstairs, which from what uh, you guys, as you guys noticed, it looks like there's possibly a flat upstairs. Might, might that be your uh, your aunt? Yeah. Uh, Jasmine? Or it's like a separate rental. Yes. I believe so. Marilyn! Marilyn, it's father. Aunt Marilyn. Aunt Marilyn. <coughs> All right, so <clears throat> I, I guess I hear that from upstairs. Yep. And I say, okay, well, somebody must be down there. So I'll um, actually walk down and uh, tap on the, the door coming in. Yeah. And I happen to see all these strangers. I'm like, uh, good evening, folks. Uh, Who are you? Who the hell are you? Uh, my name is Aaron. I'm, I'm renting this place upstairs. Um, more police officers. I look at <clears throat> the way that you're dressed. Well, I'm um, looking for Mrs. Sutton. Oh, uh, I was actually on my way down here to check on her. Um, I haven't seen her in like a day or two. Um, hmm. You seen my aunt? Uh, last time I saw her was like a couple of days ago. Um, it's kind of weird uh, or strange, I should say. Um, she was out, she was out in the snow. She, she was like wearing her nightgown. She was sort of like staring into space. I, I imagine it's because of um, Mr. Sutton, uh, what happened with him. I think she, she wasn't, she must've been uh, in distress or something, um, but she was just in a nightgown out in the snow. Um, I walked her back to her, her flat and, you know, made sure she get, she got warm and, um, um I'm you know, sorry. Uh, to, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm sorry. What's your name? Uh, Aaron. Aaron Stanton. Mr. Stanton, and you're written the, the the flat upstairs. You said. Yeah. Um, can I ask you, uh, uh, what do you do for a living? Oh well, I'm a musician. I'm a musician. Uh, jazz. Jazz. It's the only type of music. That's for sure. That's All right, good. Mr. Sutton. Um, when when did you uh, say you saw Marilyn out there in her nightgown? Was that two nights ago you mentioned? About two nights ago. Thanks. I remember having a gig last night, and yeah, it was it was the night before last. May I ask how you know my aunt? I know you're running upstairs, but how did you come to oh. come to? Here. She's, you know, the the, the uh, Stanton or the Stantons were um, just neighborly folks. Um, actually, um, I'd say about a couple of weeks ago, um, Mr. Stanton was. I, I got. I was in the middle of uh, sleeping, you know, getting ready for a gig the next day, and um, he woke me up by screaming, and you know, I ran down, knock, knocking on the door and uh, making sure nobody was getting killed in there. And um, after a few minutes, he came out and he he apologized. He said, you know, he had a bad dream or something like that. I don't know what type of dream it was, but screaming like that sounded like somebody was being murdered. So were you here when Mr. Stanton committed suicide? No, I was coming back from a gig and I seen a lot of police around and Mrs. Stanton, uh, Stanton was, um, she was out, she was crying and I ran up and asked her what happened and I see. You know, um, but. And how long have you been written the apartment upstairs? Oh, for a few months. I see. All right. Can, um, Neville, can you give me a spot hidden, please? And Miles, Neville and Miles. Oh, no. I got an 88. Oh, and 94. Okay, cool. No problem. I want to, I, I do want to do a psychology role on Aaron because it's kind of surprising to see somebody just suddenly come from upstairs <laughs> into the house. Cool. Um, give me a, give me a psych roll. All right. 
Uh, I got a 27 out of 40. Um, yeah, everything, he seems pretty genuine. Uh, everything pretty he's genuine. Said, pretty right. truthful. Um, yeah. All right. Um, well, can you, let's... Richard and Jasmine, give me some spot hiddens, please? Ooh. I failed. Uh, 51. Nine out of 30. That's a, that's a hard pass. Nice. Um, so you uh, notice in, uh, you kind of got a, you've walked in a little bit. Uh, in the, the parlor, kind of uh, on the bench, you, you've taken the sheet off. Um, and there's some family photos, um, photos of, of um, Marilyn and things as kids and, and Joseph. Um, and you know, uh, you pick up one of the photos, which has uh, quite a young Joseph in it. Um, uh, what looks like an older boy, um, possibly uh, Joseph's brother, and then a, and then a man, um, which you would assume would be the uh, the father. Um, and on the back is written to Joseph: "All the best with your college. Stay in touch. Your loving brother, Stuart." And then uh, on it also, and then another photo. It's just it's um, the older man and the young Joseph, and it says me and Pa in Maine uh, hunting moose, and um, it, it, it's uh, yeah. Did I not meet um, any of uh, Joseph's family at the wedding? So you know that um, Joseph's father. Uh, died in a, in a hunting accident very many years ago when Joseph was young. Um, and, uh, but, and you do remember meeting, meeting Stuart, um, but it was, a, it was a while ago and he was, he was slightly odd. He was kind of a little bit uh, eccentric. Um, give me, uh, give me an idea roll, Richard. Oh, 19 out of 80. That's a, that's a good pass as well. Um, you all of a sudden gasp and you're looking at the photo of Joseph. Um, there's a, there's a, an older photo of Joseph with, um, it's actually the wedding photo of Joseph and Marilyn. And in it, uh, you notice that Joseph is putting his left hand in his pocket. And you remember Joker's, Joseph's left hand was obliterated from frostbite when he was lost in uh, the woods with his um, with his father and you run over to Neville and grab the file and you look at where the gun is and where the gunshot was and it was done with the left hand which was not possible Mr. Cray yes sir This is this is wrong. This is all wrong. Look, now look. As my old professor, Doctor Bell, used to teach us in Edinburgh. One one must look at the logic. One must deduce the facts. This document suggests that my son-in-law committed suicide by shooting himself in the head with his left hand. My son-in-law had no left hand. Ah. Hmm. Mr. Sinclair, you could... Uh... Doctor, sir. <laughs> Doctor. Doctor. Uh, perhaps uh, you'd consider joining our team of uh, investigators. Well, neither one of us noticed that, did you, Archer? Nope. That's quite observant. Well, I, I certainly have a, a vested interest in the case. Um, I must, I must confess. I mean, while while the the circumstances surrounding my my son-in-law's death are, are certainly unusual, my my primary concern is locating my my daughter. Did the officer come in with us? No, the officer drove off. Oh, okay. He just dropped them uh, off and then and then left. I think that we can uh, safely go back to uh, 
the the precinct house and reopen this case. Um, gentlemen, uh, I know yes, this might you. this might sound a bit uh, strange coming from me, but uh, would you mind if I tag along? I'm I'm actually a bit worried about uh, this is uh, Sutton. Um, again, when I found her, you know, she was distraught, and I went to check on her yesterday when I uh, left for my gig and I knocked on the door and nobody answered. So I figured she might have been resting. And I came down here, I was actually coming down here to um, check on her again. And now you're telling me that she's missing. Um, well, it's a rather I, strange I be, request, but... Uh... Well, I, I, I know I can't rest and I know that it'll probably affect my, my performance later on through, uh, during the week. Yeah, well, I have something like this in my mind. To be, no, just, really, to be really, they, they were really nice people. I, I mean, to be perfectly honest, we're not police. We're private investigators. Uh, you can do whatever you want. If you want to tag along with us, we can't stop you. We got room in our sedan. Sure. But Besides, I'd like, to, I'd like to hear you play sometime. Oh, yeah. I'll come down to the club. Mr. Stanton, when, when you helped my daughter back into the house, did you happen to notice whether everything was covered up in these dust sheets as it is now? No, the, everything was um, out in the open. This is, this is new to me. So Do just the last to, couple of days. Right. Had Joseph recently, my uncle Joseph, has he recently like talked to his brother before his suicide by chance? Or do you know if any other young man might have shown up? Oh, Aaron, um, Aaron oh. you um, you do remember uh, that Joseph mentioned something when you first um, when you first started renting the place that um, him and Marilyn had recently taken a trip up to see his brother in okay. Maine, uh, who he runs a, a hunting lodge up in Maine. Um, okay. And that was probably uh, around July last year they went. All right. And what was your question, Jasmine? Sorry. Oh, um, had you recently, has, had you seen my uncle's brother by chance or another young man that looks close to scratch stature? Can you just, uh, would I know the description of this guy? Uh, I mean, obviously, you've seen the photos of uh, like a, a younger v version of Stuart, um, but you you haven't seen Stuart. Okay. No. Would no. you say, Mister Mister Stanton? Would you say that life in the house with Mister uh, that Mister and Mrs. Uh, Sutton was fairly normal? Yeah. Did they yeah. have any kind of arguments or fights? I mean, your your basic, you know. Every day, couples, couples, you know, sure. arguments, whatever. But I mean, like I said, these these people were very nice. I mean, it's the reason why. I mean, if they were loud, too loud, or like obnoxious, I would be worried about checking on them. Did, They're good neighbors. Uh, did they have um, frequent visitors, or did Stuart come over frequently? Not that I've seen. Again, you know, like I would, I would come in and I would speak to them, and you know, maybe even sit down to have dinner sometimes if they invited me. But um, usually, I would be in and out, going to work, you know, doing my jobs. Can um, Can I assume then that your normal business hours are usually at night? Yes. Yes. And theirs are during the day. Yes. All right. It's at this um, point that uh, Miles, you realize that the weather is gotten so bad outside. It's like. The wind is blowing, the snow everywhere. It's it looks like it, it probably wouldn't be very nice to go out in it right now. Um, so you, it, you you probably guess you're going to be stuck here for a little bit. Not yeah, quite a blizzard, but getting close. Nev, I I don't think we brought our our chains. The I'm not sure if it's going to be too good to be driving in this right now. You know, you were you. Oh. We didn't drive over here. Sure. Not you guys took the bus because oh, right, yeah. last night oh. your car got shot up. That's right. Yeah. Forgot. Well, I, I think the uh, 
first order of business before we do anything else would be to get a fire going. I was about that. I suggest that. But this place does have a fireplace, right? No, every day. Every place in New England has a fireplace and a basement and a <laughs> maybe even yeah. two fireplaces. We got plenty of wood inside, or should I start hauling it in? Why don't you allow me? Yeah, allow us to to get the fire started. And I'm gonna. We're gonna. I think Archer and I are gonna take the opportunity to use our careful observation of things to see if we notice anything as we're doing this. Okay. Um, so Everything. the fireplace is uh, is in the front parlor, um, and there's um, you know there's wood and, and whatnot in there. Um, what are the rest? Uh, what is Jasmine, Richard, and, and Aaron doing? Are you guys just standing there watching them make the fire, or? Well, I'm, I'll, uh, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll go. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay. No, dude, go ahead. I'm gonna go to my aunt's uh, bedroom. Okay. Just take a yeah, stroll. Gonna, I'm gonna go into the kitchen since um, they're getting comfortable and, and, and starting the fire. I'll see about putting on some coffee or tea or something like that. Sure. And um, I'll be while I'm in the kitchen. I'll I'll be doing some looking around. Sure. I, yeah. I was also heading for the kitchen. Oh, ah, cool. Um, because I um, I just like to see if there's food in the house. Um. Okay. Well, in that case, I will start with Aaron and uh, Doctor Richards. Um. Give me spot. Uh, so as you guys kind of enter, there's a uh, the the stove, some cabinets. Uh, there's a door out to the backyard. Um. And in the middle of the room, there's like a, a an island for like cutting and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, on the wall, there is some photos um, and a bunch of things on there. Give me a spot hidden, both of you. Nope. <laughs> 50 out of 30. 47 out of oh, 30. No. I have something in my eye. <laughs> Cool. So yeah, you guys um, just kind of pottering away, and and um, you find the, the the teapot, and um, you start brewing up some 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 tea. Uh, is there is, is there milk, bread, perishable? Yep. All that sort of stuffs in in the fridge, and and um, everything seems you know it doesn't seem you know the bread's a little bit stale, but it's it's not it's it's eatable and and, and things like that. Um, so yeah uh jasmine uh so the first bedroom you go into uh it looks like a bit of a guest bedroom there's just it looks like they're using a little bit of storage but there is like the beds there and i think it's fine it doesn't look like it's their room uh and so you go a little bit further down the hall and you find um another bedroom um as you open this door uh you're actually hit with a slightly it's like a, a sour smell but it's very faint in the air. Oh God, the smell. And oh. this room is a mess. Uh, the bed is unmade. Um, there's clothes just sort of um, draped over the thing, uh, over the, the, the chair and, and stuff like that. It's a bit of a mess in here. Oh, I wonder what happened. <sighs> Give me a spot hidden. Got a 18 out of 30. Cool. Um, so you notice that on the bed sheets, there seems to be some sort of stain. What's this? Huh. There's a stain here. Yeah, it's like um Can I identify it or not really. It's it's sort of it's it's an odd colour. It doesn't it kind of um you, maybe she spilt something would be your guess. Um but yeah. Is the uh, the sour odor coming from that stain or it's definitely stronger uh as you get closer to the stain, yeah. Oh, this just stinks. Like, 
it's I don't know. This is. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna go to. to is her closet open? Does she has like an open closet? Or is it just like a wardrobe or? Uh, there's a wardrobe, like a freestanding wardrobe. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go towards the wardrobe. Mm -hmm. See if, like, open it up. See if anything's in there. Or out yep. of place. There's, no, there's clothes in there. Um, it's a little bit messy, like the rest of the room. But there's there's clothes, there's jewelry. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, is there was there anything particular other than the stain on the bed? Was there anything else like on the bed? Like, while wow, I was like kind of casually looking at it from a glance. No, just just the stains. Um, cool. So Neville and and Miles. Um, as, as you guys are kind of doing the firework and everyone's walked off, I see you guys are doing the fire, but taking your time to kind of do a look around it and things as well. So can you both give me spot hidden? 30 for your natural success. Almost. 52 out of 60. Cool. So you guys both see uh, in, the, in the, the den, which is just across from the parlor, mm -hmm. um, you guys do actually, something catches your eye first miles. Um, and you sort of uh, tap Neville who um, in, in your gesture over to him and so as Neville kind of watches down the hall to see if anyone's coming Miles you kind of walk over and, and uh, you see the paper on the um, on the, the, the table there and uh, this is what it is you pick it up hmm. what'd you find there? this is interesting from the desk of Stuart Sutton, forwarding address. Stuart Sutton, Winter Haven, hunting lodge. Yeah, 30 miles north of Bangor. Closest town is Hudson in Pensacott County. Ask operator for uh, HU-154, general store in Hudson, where I get messages and mail. Leave a message. Hmm. You know, I was kind of wondering earlier if maybe uh, uh, there's uh, been more than one reference to the uh, hunting lodge up north. Um, it's an odd time of year to go to Maine. Uh, it's a gorgeous place, but Jesus Christ, with this storm and the snow. and Do you think? But if you wanted to be alone, if you wanted to get away, that's the place to go. Maybe um, she headed there. Yeah. Maybe she headed there to Stuart. So maybe Stuart's waiting for her up there. You know, this could all be just that uh, she's dealing with the grief of her, the loss of her husband, and she's decided to just take some time out and get back to nature. She's pregnant. Yeah. She's going to have a baby. It's a lot for women to deal with. Yeah. But still, we should find out. It wasn't that long ago that this happened, so yeah, she's... After all, we're getting paid $10 a day. Not bad. Holy crap. Not bad. We're going to be eating steaks and sushi. Oh, you probably don't know what sushi is. Something um, I tried once when I was in the Orient. I love food, Nev. You know that. Um, so as you... Uh, uh, so I'll jump over to Dr. Cray and Aaron. As Aaron's kind of pottering away, making the tea, um, can you, uh, both uh, Richard and Aaron, can you both give me another spot hidden, please? Oh, 23. Oh, I got a one. So, that okay. is a... so Aaron, you notice that on the board with the photos and there's a few other bits and pieces, there is a Arkham train timetable. Okay. And you you take it off, and uh, there's a, obviously a bunch of train times and their destinations there, and you notice it's very faint, but one of the trains is underlined, and it is the train from Arkham to Hudson, Maine. So I'll bring this to your attention, uh, Doctor. Um, now, Richard. The, what you noticed with your spot hidden, um, it was just like a very simple thing. It, it 
Um, Aaron seemed to not be extremely familiar where everything was in the kitchen, which isn't that surprising because obviously he lives upstairs and doesn't spend all of his time down here, but he did have to sort of, you know, oh, that's not in there. So there was like, didn't quite seem to know where everything was. Well, it's like you have that chain uh, timetable. Oh yeah, it looks like it's been underlined from Arkham to Oh, here, take a look. Arkham to Maine. At this time of year. My goodness me. And uh, the Arkham to Maine train goes every couple of days, uh, and it's an overnight train. Oh yeah, I would have thought if she wanted to get away from here in this weather, she would have gone down to Florida or something. But... Yeah, I mean, we can check this, you can check in her room to see if she's packed a suitcase or something like that that would confirm that she she took the train and left as uh, Aaron says that Jasmine you actually walk in and you hear him say that last bit this may not where, where Joseph's family were from uh, I believe so Oh, perhaps we should show this to the uh, the enterprising detectives in the other room. Yeah, they could probably make out it, make it out more than I could. Aye, perhaps I we should have a look in the the den or the study or whatever it might be, and I hope that there might be some sort of uh, correspondence or. You said that there was a there. There's a. Is there a basement level in the in the uh, cellar? Yeah, yep. There's a basement under the like. There's a doorway to the basement under the stairs. Okay. Um. I'll, I'm going to check the basement to see if there's anything down there. Like not steel or anything like that. I'm not a but, Um. <laughs> just to see if there's anything that might point us in the direction of you know what might have happened here. So I'm sure. going to head down there. Now, you be careful going down there because those um, stairs in basements and cellars are, are, are notoriously um, difficult. Oh, we wouldn't yeah, want so, you having a fall. As you open the uh, the door to the basement, uh, there's a gust of cold air, and, and you can tell it's it's very chilly down there. Okay. So I'm gonna go down there. Uh, is there like a light switch or something like that? Yep, there's just one yeah. of those like, uh, yeah, on the stairs. Okay, so I'm gonna head down. Cool, uh, as you get down, I'll, I'll jump back to you. Uh, mm -hmm. What do Jasmine and Richard do? Well, I, I was intending to go and um, show this tra train timetable to the detectives, but I'm sort of lingering by the, uh, the cellar door Okay. Um, just, just uh, watching uh, Mr. Stanton go down. Sure. Uh, or out of concern than, than anything else. I mean, people. Can you, uh, both of you give me spot hiddens. Uh, Sixty-seven fail. I have uh, ninety-eight. One of my eyes just fell out. Yeah, so you, yeah, the, nah, there's, everything seems normal, he, he just goes down, switches the this, light on, and then... This ceiling down. is inordinately dirty. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So, uh, obviously, when they kind of step into the hallway, uh, Neville, you, you uh, see them kind of come back, she gestured to Miles um, that they're, they're back, um, and you guys kind of straighten up and things. Well, we're here to look around anyway, so... What do you gentlemen make of this? Uh, uh, um, train timetable. Aye, is a, it's a... You'll notice she's... Uh, or someone has um, highlighted the, uh, the, the the train to... Uh, is it? Hudson, it, Maine. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, we just saw this here. This note of forwarding and uh, contact information up in Hudson, 
hunting from lodge. Stuart, from Stuart Sutton. Yeah. Ah, is there a, they were from up there. Is there a phone in the house? Maybe we could call up to the lodge to see if Stuart or... Uh... Aye, aye, she has a telephone, aye. That was something that was... It was the lack of a phone call from her that was uh, the original cause of consternation for me. Can, uh, Richard, can you give me a spot hidden, please? Seems like a rather remote place. Thirteen. A success. Um, so you're looking at the the um, the Stuart Sutton uh, from the desk of Stuart Sutton, the, 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 the thing that had the address and all that stuff up in Maine. And um, you realize something quite odd. And you, you go back to the, the file of the case and you notice that the suicide note is written in the same handwriting. I'm, I'm just going to go and stand by um, the lamp or under the light or with, with whichever I, I can get to in the room. Just comparing them. With... And then you pick up the photo uh, that has said me and Pa um, and you on the back of the photo of Joseph and his dad, and it's it's definitely a different handwriting. Would, you, would would you join me over here for a second? Certainly. Uh, what did you find, grandfather? Well, look at this. This is your um, this is this is your uncle's um, your uncle Joseph's handwriting on the back of this. Uh, Photograph, and this um, note that we have here, we could we could take this that this is this is written by his brother Stuart. Now, what I find particularly odd is that um, the writing on this suicide note does indeed resemble one of these sets of handwriting, but it's Stuart's that it looks like to me, unless I'm very much mistaken. What? Look, look for yourself, look. The way the T's go up. Yeah. Hi. And this, this, the loop, the loop on the E. You know, uh, Archer, maybe we're in the wrong profession. Maybe we should be doctors. And Dr. <laughs> Sinclair should be the, the investigator. You keep finding all these fantastic clues. Guy, well, I was, I was very, um, I was very lucky. When I was uh, when I was training in Edinburgh, one of my professors was uh, was quite famous for pioneering a new diagnostic method. He was uh, a great fan of uh, deductive reasoning. Huh. He liked oh. to uh, observe things. It was most impressive. I've, I've no one near to stand it, but it was most impressive to see. But there's there's something very wrong here. We have a man who shot himself with a hand he didn't have. And now we have a suicide note that's written in another man's handwriting. And it's written in Stuart's handwriting. And hand, and, and it would seem that Stuart may have lured Marilyn up to uh, a rather secluded cabin in the middle of Maine. I think we need to get our asses up there, if you pardon my yeah. language. The suicide note was signed, Joseph, so there's no mistake, like uh, maybe Stuart wrote the letter for someone else. It was clearly intended to fool with the signature of Joseph. Right. Yeah, Joseph. I can't go on. Notice the, uh, the L's and the, uh, the lower P, the little open, uh, the open swirl. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the address. Yeah, definitely the different handwriting. Or is that the same handwriting? It looks the same to me. Yeah, it looks very similar. Yeah. Um, so while you guys are doing that, I'm going to quickly jump over to Aaron. Um, so you go down to the basement and um, the, obviously it's predominantly used for storage 
uh, by the looks of it, there's there's you know camping equipment down here, a few suitcases and and, and, and whatnot. Um, uh, you do see one particular uh, suitcase though, um, and it has a four leaf clover embroidered kind of onto the top of the case. Okay, uh, I'll I'll examine it. I'll open it up and see if, if there's anything inside. Or... Uh, yeah, sure. The the case is completely full of freshly packed bills, hundred dollar bills, completely full. Ah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna take that upstairs. Show these guys. I'm also gonna pocket a couple of those hundred bills. Sure. Um, yep. Yeah, cool. So as uh, you guys are kind of at discussion, Aaron walks in carrying a uh, green suitcase with a four leaf clover kind of uh, marking on the front. Um, I will. Um... I will place it down on like a table. I'll look at Dr. Uh, Richard and um, I'll say something to the effect of, um, I, I can almost tell by your accent that you must be either Irish or Welsh. Well, if, if that's the case, you guys, uh, the, the whole luck of the Irish thing must be true and I'll flip it open and you guys see a case full of like hundreds I found this in the basement. Holy smokes. Whoa. Well, this is no. by far more money than any of you have ever seen. Dear God. Like, whoa. Well, Mr. Stanton, you might have found a suitcase full of money, but your deductive reasoning isn't quite there because I believe that Mr. Sinclair has a Scottish accent. Oh, well, <laughs> he's close to Ireland. <laughs> he studied in Edinburgh. Mm. Yeah, that's right, mate. <laughs> and and Australia. I'm 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 completely Scottish. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ! Yeah, how um, much money is in this? Bonds. I, I didn't I didn't count, but you know, wow. Like I don't know what this means, but maybe well, it's. Maybe the you know they were saving it for a rainy day, but geez, this is that's quite a rainy day. Yeah, this is yeah. more than. Are these uh, I, dollar bills or hundred dollar bills? The hundred dollar bills, a suitcase full of them. Yep, that's like, like a salary per bill. <laughs> so that's like what, close to like what, in in nineteen twenties. A million bucks. Mm-hmm. More than a million bucks? More than a million bucks, yeah. I think that I pull out my gun and shoot everybody in the room and take the suitcase and leave. <laughs> Case closed. They'll never find me in California. <laughs> and that's a joke, of course. Jesus Christ. Oh, you didn't bargain on my stainless steel whisker, did you? <laughs> uh, did, did anybody else find anything up here? Um, I was upstairs in my aunt Marilyn's bedroom, and uh, I found an odd stain on her uh, on her bed. It, it had a sour odor to it as well. Uh, what? Um, you would you mind if I go go take a look at it? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, you yeah, went I'll upstairs. By the way, the well. bedrooms uh, are on the. It's all on one level. Okay. Because the flats upstairs. Oh, that's right. Yeah, let me yeah. go take a look at that. Uh, Head on I'm over there. Identify it as. Uh, Perfume or urine or uh, it just had a sour odor. It just I don't I can't describe it. It just almost made me baffle. All right. Yeah, so I'm gonna head in there and take a look. Investigation here. Yeah, I wanna know why she why uh, they're gonna get up to Maine and suddenly go, Oh, we forgot the suitcase full of money. Hmm. Um Um I yeah. actually while while I'm in here, um I will. Well, never mind. That that's kind of mitigating. So no, they didn't tell me anything yet. So never mind. I'll, I'll do something else. Mm. Sorry. Well, so you guys go into the bedroom, uh, and you're again. You're hit with the. It's like a a faint sour smell in the air, mm -hmm. and you guys see the place is a mess as well. The bed's unmade and everything. And you do notice that there is a 
uh, a stain on the bed. Uh, and as you get closer to it, the, the, the smell is stronger. Color? What color is it? It's darker, kind of maybe like a like a, a black or a very dark brown. In our previous experiences, uh, in our cases we've covered, is, does this ring a bell at all? Uh, it's it's definitely not blood. It doesn't look like blood. Right. Um, it, you'd probably it almost looks would be closer to like like mach, machine oil or something like that for the mm. color, um, but definitely not the smell. The you, smell using, can't using either um, biology or pos perhaps pharmacy would be better. Pharmacy is more mm. veering towards chemistry on some level. Um, from from the smell and the appearance of it, does it does it resemble anything that, that I'm familiar with? Um, you, yeah. Give me give me a roll for for biology. Oh, eight out of fifty. Yeah. That's a some good rolls tonight there. Um, yeah. So you the smell. Uh, you've smelt before, yeah. In your time, it, this is it's it's the the sour smell of vomit. Oh, like we've never smelled vomit before. Remember the Buddha sisters? Jesus Christ, there's vomit all over the place. But as far as the the, the color and stuff, it, that's that's very strange. That doesn't that's match up with obviously. I don't know, like maybe something was ingested and it had that fell. Well, maybe she was throwing up chocolate. Doesn't it look like chocolate to me? It looks like something uh, most unwholesome. Hmm. It, it's... I've no idea. I'll, I'll, I'll walk into the, the bedroom and, and take a look at this. Um, with the coloration of this vomit, remind, or will I pick up on, on that? Would that uh, remind me of anything? No, no, it's, it, it, it doesn't, yeah. It, none of you guys seem to kind of, it, it looks like oil probably as far as color and things, but it just, it doesn't make sense. Like it looks, maybe it's spilt, but then as I said, it's got the smell of vomit. What's the shape of the, uh, of the stain? Is it like a large splatter? Or does it look like it like hit and went over something so it didn't, no, it looks like it's kind of, there's patches of it kind of everywhere. There's some on the, the duvet, there's some of the sheets on the pillow. Well, wait, she was pregnant, so she probably was throwing up, you know. Women get sick while they're they're pregnant. Yeah. No, that's, that's so, but um, <laughs> this doesn't look, this doesn't look like ordinary vomit. Hmm. It's, it's, it's inky. And, um, why, and why was it not cleaned up? Yeah, this wasn't cleaned up yet. The rest of the house has towels and blankets thrown over the furniture. This something seems a little off here. Um, when when Mr. Stanton and I were in the kitchen, I noted that um, there was bread and there was milk. Now, who covers up the furniture with dust sheets but leaves perishables in the kitchen? It makes no sense. Oh, that reminds me. I'll, I'll run to the kitchen to turn off the, the tea. That's been going. Oh, yeah, I can hear that kettle yeah, it's from here. It's um, also... It'll boil, right? Uh, give me an idea roll, Jasmine. We can also assume, can we not, that if a person covers up their furniture, they're planning on coming back. Got them seven. Yeah. Cool. So um, you notice that there's one other room down here that you haven't checked. Um, I got a quick question for the keeper. Um, you said that the room was was uh, tossed around in disarray. Does it look like uh, some, like she was, or whoever was in the room was looking for something and just left it in the mess? Does it look like there was a struggle or a fight? Or does it look no, like... It just looks like someone's a slob. It just looks okay. like, yeah, just someone's been lazy, to be honest. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, there's one more other bedroom we can look at real quick. I got another room we can go look at. It's remembered. Okay. Let's see. What would that be? Yeah, lead the way. Okay. What's the room? Uh, so it's just next uh, next to it. Like, so that goes. Um... Oh, the guest bedroom. 
yeah, guest, yeah. the guest bedroom. Um, so in the in that room, uh, things had been kind of pushed around, and there was the bed there, but there was also a like a, a crib. Um, the parts that, like hadn't been built up, but there was all the all the stuff for um, for a baby. So they're converting the room into a nursery. Yeah, yeah, that would be your guess to that room. Does the bed look like it was slept in? Give me a spot hidden. Oh, I got a six. Yes. Yeah. Um, The bed looks like it's slept in. I have a very sneaking suspicion that Mr. Stuart Sutton was here. hmm. After all the notes written in his handwriting. Notes written in his handwriting. And he would have every cause to uh, to take a train up to Hudson Lane. At this point, you guys all noticed that there's a big howl of wind, and you look out through the windows, and the weather is just insane. All you can see is that. That's a goddamn blizzard. Yeah, it's just gone insane out there. We should close up the shutters. How many how many bedrooms do we have in this? There's two bedrooms. So there's the main room, uh, and then there's the room you're in now. Um, I, w- I want to go into the bathroom and, and I guess check the medicine cabinet and mm-hmm. you know check things in there. Cool. Yes. Give me a give me a spot hidden. So base pretty basic bathroom. Got the the toilet. Um, it's one of mm-hmm. those kind of bath shower combo things. Mm-hmm. Little sink with uh, the wind uh, with the mirror. Yeah, I, I didn't pass it. 55 yeah, so it's just everything is pretty standard standard okay yeah. um something just clicked in my my head um the doc dr richard basically said that um his son-in-law his hand was his left hand was uh missing or something like that right it's pretty badly mangled yeah like, yes um, the picture with him and Stuart um, on their hunting trip, I, I wanted to just get a quick look at that um, because I would imagine um, if they're hunting moose in the picture, you would probably have them with their rifles in their hand. I want to see if um, Stuart is sort of favoring his left hand as his dominant hand holding the right. So the photo of Stuart and Joseph and their dad, his hand is fine. Oh, okay. It was, uh, it was when he went hunting just with his dad and his dad died where he got lost in the woods that right. he got the frostbite on his hand. But there is photos of, of Joseph there, like on his wedding day and stuff, where he's got his left hand in his pocket and he's actually, like, if you look at them, he's actually purposefully holding himself in a way so that he can hide his left hand. Okay. Well, the, the reason why is um, most people are right-handed. And so, um, and shooting somebody with the left hand um, would show that they're more dominant in their left hand. Um, so if Stuart... Oh, Stuart. Stuart is holding his rifle in his left hand. Like he's, Yeah. All right, so then I will um, bring that to the attention of everybody else. Like, um, it looks like um, Stuart is his dominant uh, dominant hand is left hand. So that's another, I guess, clue for you guys. Yeah, we All right, Stuart. Although I don't suppose it would matter which hand you pull the trigger with when True. you're shooting somebody else. Well. Um, it, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm not a detective or anything, but I would imagine if um, if you're using your you would use your dominant hand. It's it's something that you're more comfortable with. It's kind of like trying to write with your your left hand if you're right-handed. Um, well, it's, it's not going to be as precise, I guess. Unfortunately, this all took place a couple of weeks ago. The thing is, is if we can uh, apprehend Mister Mister Sutton. We could do a melage test, but uh, very likely by now the, uh, the residue of the gunpowder on his hand would have uh, dissipated. Uh, we wouldn't find much. 
Right. I mean, it's, I know it's, it's, it's a, a clue towards uh, maybe a theory or something. I'm sure that might have happened. I'm sure the police dusted already for, uh, for prints on the gun. I would think if the man was was willing to go to a, to these lengths, then um, he would have uh, wiped the gun. It's but it's still. Great. How does he how does he produce fingerprints from fingers that don't exist? Exactly. So so if if they just if the police thought immediately it was a suicide with a note, they might not have dusted figuring it was a suicide, why pursue a, a potential murder? Now, we don't know the intelligence quotient of Mr. Mr. Stuart Sutton, but uh, somehow I feel that if he had done a really good job planning such a murder, he would have thought of those things. But uh, perhaps this is a crime of passion, in fact. We don't know what his, if he was staying here, what's his relationship with uh, Miss uh, Mrs. Sutton? Maybe there's something going on on the side. You know, you never know in these cases. I think perhaps you'd better keep your supposition to yourself, young man. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a detective. I have to think about these things, mostly. Clean. Well, I'll say that um, each time I, I was invited over here and every time I seen the two of them, they seemed like they were in love. Oh, well, um, so, Mr. Stanton, I mean, but was Mr. Stewart staying here, Mr. Stanton? Uh, no, not that I know. No. Well, then perhaps I'm wrong. I mean, but as far as um, as uh, Mr. Stanton or Mr. Sutton, I should, I should, you know, my name and his name. <laughs> I mean, one one might. But, think. but I, I I believe that they, you know, like yeah, he and his wife were in love. They, I don't think that there was anything going on between Stewart and and, and Miss uh, Mrs. Stanton or Sutton. Sorry, you never, um, Aaron. You never saw Stewart ever. Right. All right. Well. I think that we have reason to see if we can retrace these steps and get get ourselves up to to Maine and see if we can get to the bottom of this. Something is damn peculiar here. Aye. Well, I mean, this, I mean let's take this... Um, I don't know that we're going to get out of the house. Of, this case full of money. I mean, that's there you have grounds for a, a murder. You could imagine someone killing another person in order to get this money, but then why leave it? Exactly. And where did it come from? Where does, who gets this kind of money? Uh, Mr. Sinclair, your, your family's not particularly wealthy. I mean, you make it, you're a doctor, but you ever seen this kind of money? No, I mean, I, they, they, I did, well, they did well enough. I, mean, like I, don't, I don't recall any worries about money. This kind of money... I would say would have to be associated with uh, bootleggers or the Irish mob. Of course, we got a strong Irish mob here, believe me. But why, are the, why is it in this house? Why is, is the Suttons involved? That doesn't make any sense. It could be the Australian mob. Well, it's possible, but... Uh, it depends what their accents are like. I think uh, that uh, I think that there's grounds to believe that there is far more involvement with this family, not you, of course, doctor, but not not your daughter, of course, but perhaps Mr. Sutton was involved in something that we're not aware of. I just uh, it, it, the beggar's belief. I, I I can't imagine. Can I imagine? Um, Joseph being involved with something like that. Uh, I got a question for the keeper. Uh, all the time that I, you know, I'm really close to my aunt Marilyn. Uh, is it possible that she, you know that bag I might have seen like once or twice? The couple of times I might have visited. Oh no, you've never seen this bag before. No. Okay. No. But um, you, you and uh, Doctor, you guys both know Joseph, and he was always. Uh, very very lovely um he didn't have much family 
um so you know he he you didn't meet any of kind of his his family only met his parents at, at the wedding uh, and stuff like that but yeah they were they seemed perfectly in love um he was a nice man um yeah you know and uh, he was a banker he was a good 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 banker yeah. well he was a banker so there's this another thing but maybe he's embezzling this money from the from the bank i would like yeah, full disclosure in front of everyone no, no funny business here i would like to very carefully go through the suitcase i'll remove the money I'll give it a cursory counting, but I'm also hoping that maybe there's some other evidence in this bag. Maybe there's a business card. Maybe there's something at the bottom of all the money. Maybe there's something, you know, that was in the suitcase before they put all of the money in it, and it's mm-hmm. still there. And Any- Mr. Stanton. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Stanton, you, you said you found this case in the cellar, correct? Yeah. Was there anything else down there, or should we should we go down there and give it a thorough search? Actually, we can give it a thorough search because I, I basically saw this money. And I said, "Whoa, let me bring this up here and show you guys right away." Well, you know, Nev. You know. well, why don't you go do that, and I'll stay here and I'll count the money. I'll do it right here on the table. So I'll, you know, I'll stay up here. here. I'll, yeah, I'll stay up here with you then. All right, Mister Mister Stanton will watch me. <laughs> I'll go down into the uh, into the cellar. Would anyone like to come? Uh, come I'll fall with? behind you. Thank you, Jasmine. So I pick up a stack of money. 100. 200. <laughs> 300. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> 1,000. 2,000. 3,000. <laughs> uh, cool. So yeah, um, we'll start with the, the folks going downstairs. Uh, you guys go down to the basement. As I said, it's very cold down there. Very, very chilly. Um, it's, it's, it smells a bit damp. Um, but you go down. You, you, as I said, there's more suitcases. You check more. You look through everything. Um, everything seems just normal down here. There's a uh, said camping equipment. A uh, little bit of you know. There's some hunting rifle um, stuff down there, but that's not unheard of. As you know, he, he used. To, used to hunt uh but yeah no it all seems pretty normal down there does um, anything look m- messed around like somebody searched down here or any commotion uh, not that you guys can tell uh it just looks all pretty pretty standard but it takes you a little bit of time to go through that all so, uh so neville um and uh i'm assuming richard you stayed up with neville you stayed up there with the money Oh, yeah. I, I, I'll just uh, I'd like to sit by the fire for a while. Let's well, and Mr. Stanton yeah. stayed up here with me, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Feeling, I'm feeling the cold a little. Um, so, Neville, you find, uh, you take all the money out, and there's there's about a million dollars there. Um, and you're, it's just, there's, but it's just short, just short of a million dollars. Uh, yeah, which is a little strange. But at the bottom, um, under, underneath, Kind of some where the money was there is embroidered in the inside of the the, the suitcase property of mordecai o'leary ah uh, now that sounds like an irish mob name if ever i heard one um look, looking again at the um as, as he says that about the, the Irish mob, uh, looking again at the, at the top of the uh, the case, um, is it a four-leaf clover or is it a shamrock? It's a shamrock. It's a shamrock. Right. I don't know the difference. A four-leaf clover has four lobes and a shamrock has three. I see. I believe. Um, No, you're probably right. uh, Property of Mordecai O'Leary. Leave it up to an Irish mob member to put the uh, the embroiderer of who it belongs to inside the suitcase. Um, Miles, while you're down there, you you see a stack of newspapers. um, And it looks like they've been putting them down here. and, And some of them are fairly new. And one of them catches your eye. Um, and it's the, 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 on the title it says, um, attempted mob hit, 
um, Italians and Irish at each other's throats in New York City. Miles? I'm sorry, I, I, uh, it glitched out. So yeah, you, um, you find a newspaper that says, um, uh, attempted mob hit, uh, Irish and Italians at each other's throat, New York City. Hmm. Mm. Um, and the article pretty much reads that, um, at a, the police had to bust a speakeasy, uh, brawl between, uh, the Irish and the Italian mob in New York City when a, um, a New York mobster by the name of Dominic Strollo uh, was um, someone tried a, a, an assassin tried to attempt attempted to try and kill him um, and it, people were saying it was the uh, the assassin known only as the Reaper which you have heard of the Reaper. Um, it's a nefarious assassin who uh, leaves the calling card of a black rose, but there was a failed attempt. And um, yeah, uh, Strollo got away um, and hasn't been heard of since. Mm. This was probably about a month ago, dated about a month ago. Mm. Now, yeah. This is very peculiar. Look at this. this. What do you got? This does not look good. Take a look at this. We got uh, mob involvement, of course. It's sort of predictable. How and did Neville, you, you, you also, you too have also heard of the Reaper? Yeah. Um, Some sort of Black Rose assassin. But unsuccessful, so I suppose he left a yellow rose instead of a black rose because he didn't succeed. But not caught. He's still at large. You know, this could be a very dangerous case. We could be involved in... Uh, uh, somebody's going to come looking for that money. Yeah, that is for sure. Yeah, this is just too much money. This is too much money to... to be forgotten about. Well, if that much money was missing from the bank, we would have heard about it already. So it couldn't be embezzlement. It's got to be some sort of mob involvement. Unless Mr. Sutton just found the bag of money accidentally where the where the gangsters left it. And that's a possibility, but it's not a very likely one. Yeah. Now, they're, well, now Maryland's missing. Do, do you think that um, this, I mean, let's take Stuart out of the picture at this point. I mean, we have this money here. Do you think that this might have been like a mob hit? And they would have taken the money. I mean, yeah, it was in plain sight, but I don't know. Um, I mean, there'd be no reason to hit the guy unless they knew he stole the money, in which case they would have torn the place apart looking for the money. Right. There's something, it just doesn't make any sense. Unless Stuart or Marilyn came across the money recently, stored it here briefly, and then fled. But what, why would they leave the money? Well, that no. might be the thing. They might have left it safely here so that if the mob follows them up north... I don't know. There's a lot they, of possibility. If they planned on hiding it or keeping it here, I would. It would stand to reason they would try to hide it a little better than just leaving okay. it. Okay. Sometimes hiding things in plain sight is the best way to do it. Well, yeah. I had How that. About, uh, well, what about this? Let, let's say that Mr. Sutton had found the money somehow. Um, that knew knew what he had perhaps put it in a safety deposit box or something like that, and he was bumped off because of it, didn't have the money on him, and I guess let his wife know about it, or, or his wife knew about it, and inherited his key or something like that, found it, and stored it in the basement. 
That's an interesting thing, maybe, but that's a lot of uh, little assumptions to put together. We'll figure it out, believe me. Yeah. I think you I think you privatized or rubbing off of me. Coming up with these uh, yeah, apparently we're rubbing off on you, we're rubbing off on the doctor. <laughs> I think uh I I got a question. You know, shit that storm outside's really bad, but once you know, once we sort of get a way to get out of here, I think we need to put this money someplace safe. Um I think we should turn it in. Should we turn it into the police? That's not a bad idea. That the phone rings. The phone's ringing. Uh, well, uh, well, you're the next to Ken, so. The problem is. Oh, um, uh, yes, I, I better than. Uh, um, uh, <coughs> four two nine one. That's me. Uh, Mr. Cre- I, I, um, uh, Mr. Cre- it's for, uh, it's for you. Um, yeah, who is this? Um, there's a little bit of static and, and crackling on the phone. Obviously, the weather's making it. It's Dr. Harris. Dr. Harris? You need to come back to the office, please. That was uh, and well, it hangs up. Yeah. Uh, uh, Archer, that was Everything. that was Doctor Herod. Um, he seemed in distress. Says we need to come back immediately. We well, you, you were um, just there earlier. Everything okay? I don't know. He seemed rather distressed. Uh, gentlemen, uh, Archer, you want to stay here? I can go. No, you shouldn't go out in this mess all alone. We should. We should, You and I should go together. Well, we got to take the bus again. Uh, that's right. You don't have any way to get over there really quickly. Um, Can we call me, a cab? I, give me idea rolls. Uh, actually, no, I, I, won't, I won't do it that way. I will just say, so, um, Aaron, you have a car, and both Jasmine and Richard, you, you guys actually wouldn't mind meeting um, Joseph's psychiatrist and possibly asking him some questions about... So, uh, so, yeah. Mr. Stanton, you have a car. Could you? Would you mind giving us a ride? I don't mind at all. Let, let, me, let me run upstairs and, and grab my my coat and gloves and scarf. Will, and will we all fit in this uh, this 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 uh, motor conveyance of yours? We can pile in. Yeah, yeah, I think you're going to get what an eight, eight person sold. car. <laughs> what are we doing with that huge case stuffed full of hundreds? Oh, uh, uh, let's uh, put it back. Well, at least let's put it back into the basement. Uh, where we found it. I think we should and take it with us. I don't know. I mean, it's it's. This is your 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 Ken's. I uh, I think house, it's so fairly safe if we if we leave it here. We'll we'll put it in the in a closet. Nobody will know it's there. Yeah. Besides, I got my eye on you, all of you. Besides, we could not tell anybody and just split the cash at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, I'm innocent, so I, I can't do that. Your, your grandfather could take it for you. and <laughs> I'm sure uh, there's a lot of nice uh, whiskey and cigars in there. Uh, and retire early. Far too old to, to have enough time to spend that much money. Well, let's and get. It's, also, it's, it's pretty light at this time. It's probably... Let's get going. It's a pretty bad storm. I hope we're okay. In the... <sighs> right, right, right. Yeah, dangerous. Just let's leave nice and slow. Try All right. Cool. Oh, so we'll yeah, get... you guys. Uh, uh, so Aaron runs upstairs to, to get his coat and all that stuff, and you guys will put. You know, you do what you need to do, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then you you kind of step outside and the wind is just cutting through you and and you, you make your way over to the car and you all pile in and and um it, it takes a while because obviously aaron is, is um she, aaron give me a drive uh test is this like my like like the infamous dexterity rolls mm-hmm. <laughs> all right i only have a 20. oh I could drive. We're gonna slide all over the place. And that is a seventeen out of twenty. 
Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, you, 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 you're being very careful and you're very cautious, obviously, with passing and everything. So it takes you guys a fair bit of time to get over to um, to get over to Dr. Harrods again in, in Uptown. Um, it's quite late at this point, but weather's pretty bad. Um, and, and you get out and um, you, you, you go up to the door and you notice that the doors, uh, as you get closer, you actually notice that the doors can force. Uh, here. I'm sorry, uh, Miss uh, Miss Jasmine and Doctor Sinclair and uh, Stanton. Why don't you wait here? I know it's cold, but uh, Archie, let's get our guns and yeah, maybe wait in the car. Yeah, make sure everything's okay. I'll check the back door first. So, as you guys are, you guys you're entering. Yeah, but very carefully. Okay. So, as you guys go in, you kind of can't believe it, but everything is covered in ice what in christ god's name what the hell is this all about this doesn't look good Ned. um the ground covered in ice too yeah well then i think that we should do dexterity rolls to see if we don't slip and fall on our asses i got leather bottom so shoes Oh, Whew, no. I got a 20. <laughs> I'm used to this. 78 out of 70. Oh, oh yeah, so Miles, as you kind of you kind of rush in to go check the back, and you just slide over and, and fall on your butt. Dasha, come on. This is just like every other winter. Come on. Here, let me help you up. Thanks. Uh, Jesus Christ, everything is fruit. This, this um, is and like... as they uh, as they opened the door to obviously go in, the the other three of you guys can see into the room as well and see that everything is just covered in ice. Does it look like there's a, a like a, a, a big struggle? Things all torn about, or are we looking at just no. just frozen? Doctor yes, yeah. Doctor Herod, Doctor Herod, where are you? There's no answer. I checked the left side of the room. Let's go towards uh, yeah. where where his office is. We've been in so his, his office. Up, his office, office was upstairs. Oh, Jesus. We're going to have to walk up the stairs with the ice. Well, hold on to the railing. Go, go carefully. It's like one little step, two little step, three yeah. little step. <laughs> there, you there. So you, you guys get to the door and... It, there's like ice all over it and it's it, it like you can't it won't open it's it's like you know you're gonna have to put some force behind it all right i'm gonna shove against it and hopefully i won't slip and slide yeah i got a 21 out of 60 so that's a hard um yes yeah, so you you just really put your shoulder into it and you you bust the door open and again the room everything is covered in ice including sitting behind the desk is Dr. Harrod completely frozen in place um, oh my icicles hanging off his face just a look of terror stricken across his face sanity checks from both of you oh uh, fail oh fail uh, just a 1D uh, if it's fail I uh, do a 1D4 Big one. Christ Three, God Almighty. Um, and, and you see the phone oh, here. Um, it is frozen into one of his hands. What in Christ? What the hell? Is this this makes no sense. This is 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 Miss Jasmine anywhere nearby? Is she still downstairs? You couldn't see any sign of Josie, no. So it's just Jos oh I mean Jasmine. Uh, Miss, Miss Roth. Uh, fuck. Just wanted to make sure I didn't say that in front of the young woman. <laughs> what, what? What is, uh, what is, what was Herod looking at? What direction was Herod looking at? Can we see? He'd be facing uh, the door, right? Uh, he was facing in the door, yeah. This. The door was closed. 
and he seemed terrified. Well, what's in the area? I, I, I start checking out the area of, of his gaze. Is, is there anything unusual about that area? Uh, give me a spot him. Ooh, oh, 05 out of 50. Boom. Um, you see, it's very faint, very, very faint, but standing, um, it looks like just the, the window in the room is open. By the way, so there's a lot of cold air coming in, but in the frozen ground just on beneath the window, there's two foot marks. Like someone was standing there. Neville, look at this. This is these are definitely footmarks right here. But I'm 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 flabbergasted. I mean I can't explain this at all. I mean who would have had to have left his window open all night long and sprayed down everything with a garden hose to get this sort of thing. I, I, I'm going to take out my pipe and I'm going to walk over to Mr. Uh, to Dr. Herod's face and see if I can break some of the ice off of his face. Okay. Uh, give Maybe me he's still a, alive in there. Give me what? a luck roll. Uh, 38, that is a pass. Um, so you, you're tapping away and you see the, the glass crack, sorry, the, the ice crack a little bit. Mm. Okay, go Dr. Herod, are you okay? <laughs> uh, give me a strength check. Plan. A strength check? Yeah. Uh, 18 out of 60, that is a hard. <laughs> Neville. So Dr. Harrod just shatters like his bits, like chunks of meat and everything, like just completely shatters. So I'm going to need Neville and Miles to do a sanity check, please. Oh, fail. Um, oddly, I passed that one. <laughs> I kind of saw it coming. Um, Take one. Take one at least. Uh, Miles, give me a 1d4. All right. Sorry, Dr. Sutton. Let me put you back together. I mean, Dr. Dr. Herod. Oh, two. All right. Oh, so my God. Three. Took three? Okay. So, so I uh, down two plus the one just before, so I total down three. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, call it there for tonight. Oh, f what did you do, <laughs> Neville? I'm sorry, you know. You broke Mr. Herod. Cool. It's, so it's, that's the, uh, that is the first episode of Cold Warning. Wow. <laughs> it, it's just like when we were working on that other case, you know, with the, uh, the frozen dentist, but in this case, yeah. it wasn't the dentist. Oh my God! All right, <laughs> our players included Stuart Lipley, Mick Swan, Wayne Worthy, Dakota Davis, and myself, with Zane Fleming as the keeper of the secrets. We're currently producing up to five shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. Hi, Rex. We we provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch that bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. And follow us on Twitter at ITD Podcast. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.